Assalamu alaikum friends welcome to lecture 11 of AFM this is section C so we have just finished uh, risk management in lecture 10 and now we are moving to accusation and merger there are going to be four lectures in accusation and merger lecture 11 lecture 12 lecture 13 and lecture 14 before we go to uh, lecture 15 onwards will be reconstruction so lecture 11 in this we don't have any questions this is basically your uh, questions for discussion we don't have any calculation here your calculation questions will come from next lecture onwards that is lecture 12 okay so in this lecture the topic is accusation and merger versus other growth strategies so why accusation what is synergy the impact of mergers and acquisition on stakeholders reverse takeovers so these are the four areas we are going to discover in this lecture okay starting okay so this is like the what do i say things that we are going to cover in the in this lecture and the following three lecture okay so this is going to cover how do you finance the takeover which is not in this lecture but in the future lecture then regulation of takeovers that is also not in this lecture then we have synergy which we are going to cover in this lecture then we have defenses against takeover remember you can protect yourself against takeover there are some techniques that is also not in this lecture then you can finance takeovers cash or share for share exchange which we are going to cover in the later so we are already going to cover synergy in this lecture okay these are the main areas for acquisition and merger what are the defense techniques what are the synergies what are the regulations how do you finance and one more thing how do you value which i have not included which is the next lecture that is full of calculations and all okay so this is going to be a small lecture and an easy lecture reasons for growth by accusation do you know what is accusation first of all accusation or merger what is the difference both accusation and merger means when two companies join together and become one company we all know that but the slight difference between merger and accusation is merger is you are joining willingly both the companies are willingly joining they are friendly joining accusation is it's like a stronger company is taking over a smaller or a weaker company it is not very friendly okay so that is the slight difference but it's okay the difference does not matter so much for your afm exam okay for the purpose of your afm exam both accusation and merger you can take it as same okay it's the same thing now these are the reasons for growth if in the question they ask why a company needs to grow they will ask you discussion questions are always asked in any topic you need to know what to write one reason why accusation is synergy what is synergy we we'll leave it for time being now because this itself is a topic we are going to cover uh, up to uh, like a little bit later next increase market power or share yes definitely when two companies join together the combined when they are combined they increase no their shares increase next economies of scale yes because when two companies join together this specially happens in horizontal integration if you know what is horizontal integration when you are joining in the same line for example two car industry are joining with each other there you can achieve economies of scale why your cost will reduce rather than having two separate hrd or two separate finance department have one now so your cost reduces and you are achieving economies of scale then we have combining complementary needs complementary needs means when one company is uh, having strength in some area which is a weakness of another company you know so by acquiring the company they can both use each other's resources for example one company might be having great idea but no finance the other company has full of cash to finance but no idea so they both can get along and use each other improve efficiency it also improves efficiency Im just think that before the accusation the target company target means the company which is going to be taken over the weaker companies in afm will be known as target company the one who is acquiring it is known as acquirer okay you should know these terms so target company let's say the management was weak so they were not very efficient now by acquiring them you can improve their efficiency a lack of profitable investment opportunities surplus cash as i told before they might have surplus cash but they do not have that investment opportunity so by acquiring they can shares of the okay i think some points are missing tax relief you can get tax relief how 
because when two companies join together okay what's happening their cost is reducing no? they might be investing they might be uh, through investing okay you might get capital allowances and all those things hence you can get tax relief also if you are taking loan to acquire on that loan you are going to get tax relief because we know that loan has an interest to it and interest are tax deductible you can save your tax okay reduce competition yes because when two big companies are joining together you don't have to compete because you both are in under the same company now so competition reduces asset stripping now you can use the asset of them they're using your asset diversification yes you might diversify you might think that through uh, acquiring you're diversifying if you are not in the same line of business you can reduce your risk because they might not be correlated if one is doing well the other one might be doing bad so the overall impact is uh, the loss is reduced the risk is reduced and the shares of the target are undervalued this is good from the point of acquirer the one is acquiring they can get it at a low cost right so these are some few reasons i didn't write the explanation because i have explained you the points now it's up to you how you want to write it advantages of organic growth okay you can also grow your business organically also rather than taking over someone what are the advantages remember this advantages and disadvantages you should know of organic versus acquisition advantages of organic business dis uh, disadvantages of acquisition it's the same thing okay so having organic growth you can stay in line with your stated objective okay second it is less risky organic growth is less risky even though it takes more time but it's less risky compared to acquisition third cost cost is higher in acquisition because you have to pay a huge amount of premium especially if they have goodwill and all that company is highly valued you have to pay a huge premium to get, get that company so that increases your cost avoid problems integrating new acquired companies it's not possible to integrate process the system where there are differences lots of differences are there you can think it from the point of culture also imagine like if you are organically growing it is your business you have been in that business for let's say 10 years 20 years you know the culture very well there is no cultural issue that will come but the moment you are going to acquire someone their culture your culture is different culture will clash then dispute will happen and then they fail right so all these issues accusation places an immediate pressure on the current management why they have to learn they have to learn new skills now they have to learn how to manage accusation now we are moving on to the advantages of accusation it is quickest way if you want to expand geographically and with the new product it reduces the risk of oversupply and excessive competition we earlier we told that competition is reduced and also risk of oversupply fewer competitors which is good for you that means you can dominate the market increase market power by exercising control over the price for example you could be a monopoly if you are the only one or you could collide with other producers and charge high prices which is not correct but you can do it you have the power accusation gives you that power acquiring the target companies highly staff trained will give you the competitive advantage so these are some advantages it's a very easy next there are some issues also with accusation what are those issues the issues you have to know number one issue is the board structure there will be a power struggle the directors of the current board they will not be happy maybe if, especially if they have to lose the uh, job they will not help with the accusation process they do not want to acquire they do not want the two firms to get along so this will have an impact on the board structure second board hostility the board might reject for the accusation they might not want to go that's why we have all these defensive techniques and all later which we are going to study in later lecture impact on corporate governance yes okay the details of this corporate governance is in your, is in your sbl there you can go and study but from afm you don't have to know the details it's not required cultural differences especially if they are based in two different countries for example you, uh, you are in the food industry okay let's say you want to sell beef if you have to sell beef in india okay they might not like it 
because they they are religious or they are cultural believers that they do not eat beef okay likewise even pork in some countries are not accepted by some religion so if you go and try to promote there it will not work one example okay i'm not offending anyone it's just an example loss of key personnel from target company yes sometimes what happens from the target company the main the reason why you have acquired is because of those key personnel if they only go from it walk away it's your loss the one who has who has acquired not the target company's loss integration difficulties yes is integrate to uh, it's difficult to integrate the two system the operation if their data systems are different and all those things and adverse pr public relation especially especially if there's a threat of job losses for the employees they will not support it they'll be against it okay now we are moving on to synergy what is synergy synergy is where the value of the combined company ab is greater than the uh, the addition of the two companies separately a plus b if you're not understanding in simple words it is 2 plus 2 equals to 5 not 4 why that additional one that you are getting is synergy 2 plus 2 is 4 on normally but that 5 that one additional that you are getting that is synergy that means when you are adding the two parts individually the sum of it is more okay when you are experiencing more than the sum of that that is known as synergy you are experiencing synergy that is the meaning of synergy there are three types of synergies that you have to know in afm number 1 revenue synergy number 2 cost synergy number 3 financial synergy what does a revenue synergy means that means your market power is increased you can you are combining complementary resources you are using each other's resources through that you can achieve synergy cost cost means you are reducing cost by having economies of scale financial synergy you are eliminating inefficiency okay now let us go in detail what is this revenue synergies they asked in the exam they can ask they will ask out of the three synergies at least one or all the three okay revenue synergy means these are the three things that you have to know under revenue synergy it comes market power economies of vertical integration and complementary resources market power means okay when firms merge their market power increases so they can have a control also because of that they can reduce the competition you understanding and they can increase their price that's how they can achieve revenue synergy they can increase their sales second economies of vertical integration vertical integration means when you are either going backwards or forward backward means you are you are um, buying your supplier of raw materials going forward means with the retailer you are joining okay that is known as vertical integration but you are in the same production chain only so you are acquiring the same production chain either for the raw material supplier or a retailer so what happens because of this you can increase the profit because the middleman is cut no from there the profit that goes to the middleman is now cut now you are getting it and also you can control the raw material supplies of raw material you can even avoid dispute also that you previously had with the supplier or the customer through this you can achieve more sales hence revenue synergy third complementary resources complementary means when the strength of the two companies okay using the strength of the two companies you can achieve synergy for example one company specializes in r&d and the other company is strong in marketing area combine both and you can use it to achieve great revenues next type is cost synergy under cost synergy there are two things one is economies of scale the other one is economies of scope economies of scale you can achieve through this for example now you'll be having a larger production volume after joining two companies so because you are having larger production volume your operating cost administrative cost will be fixed only i mean they will not change so much by joining two companies so you can spread those operating and administrative cost over a larger production volume and reduce your cost overall cost second way is consolidation of manufacturing capacity on fewer and larger sites you don't need so many sites consolidate third capacity you can use earlier there was so much of space which were lying idle now use it to full capacity third buying power if you are increasing something in bulk you will get heavy discount we all know that next is 
savings on duplicated centrals other than having two separate central services two accounting staff cost have one and save your cost next is economics of scope that means you can have this can occur in marketing for example having a joint advertising or common distribution rather than having two separate distribution have one okay third is the financial synergy this you can achieve by eliminating inefficiency second tax sale or accumulated tax losses remember now both the companies can enjoy the tax sale or the accumulated tax losses if one company is having accumulated tax losses carry forward and set it against the taxable profit of another company and pay less tax surplus cash if one company is using surplus cash the other company can use it corporate risk diversification this happens when you are uh, acquiring a company which is unrelated to you why unrelated because if you are diversifying into unrelated things unrelated stuff are not correlated for example imagine if both are same what happens one industry drops the sales in the other industry also will automatically drop because they are in the same industry but having different this thing if they are not correlated if you are having a downfall in one market the other one will experience up right or the upside so overall your loss or risk will reduce that's how you're diversifying risk diversification and financing through diversification you can even reduce your finance also because once you are diversified creditors see your business as less risky so they will give you finance also at a cheaper cost to a diversified to a to a, a quiet entity they're bigger no so these are the ways now there are other sources of synergies also other than this three number one is the surplus managerial talent that you can get through this also you can have the synergy okay second is speed acquisition is faster than organic growth remember third we are moving on to impact of mergers on stakeholders remember stakeholders means there are many stakeholders you sometimes have to write a report if this comes in question one about the impact we often forget this part we are only focused on calculation calculation and calculation no you have to write remember afm is also writing so do not underestimate the power of your uh, discussion question for afm no not at all you are not going to survive alone with just calculations in afm i'm telling you this since you are almost near your exam now i think it's not even one month that is left so starting with shareholder there are two shareholders one the target company shareholder the other one is the acquiring company first let's see from the acquiring company's point of view what is the impact on the shareholder for them they are only worried whether their shareholder will this maximize or not through this accusation if that is maximized accusation is beneficial for them and how do you know that the synergy will tell you if you have the synergy means they are getting the benefit shareholder wealth is maximized okay second is the target company shareholder they will benefit if they are achieving if they are getting the premium from the acquirer the one who have acquired it if they are receiving premium from them it is their advantage so for them there's a financial benefit also for the target company they are receiving a huge premium third impact is on the debt holders remember if there is any change in control debt will be repayable don't worry okay so the risk profile of the acquirer may be different from that of the original borrower the bank will not wish to become exposed to higher credit risk bonds may not be the same okay the acquirer is likely to arrange new financing because of this what does acquirer do they arrange new financing or debt or equity financing before the takeover the original borrower let's say before the acquisition they might be exposed to high credit risk so acquiring it you do not want to face the same risk so you change you change the way it is financed the debt and equity ratio you can change easily the acquirer then the impact on managers and staff what do you think mostly they will have a negative reaction right they will say no 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 we don't want to take over to go ahead right because they are in the fear of losing their jobs especially the target company they see takeover as like a death death of their job but the managers of the acquiring company see takeover as a opportunity the one is acquiring it 
Why? Because they can demand high salaries and bonuses, saying that they are now managing a larger company. So, what do acquirer do? They may sometimes also wish to retain those managers who are highly skilled and knowledgeable in the target company. They do not want to lose it. At least in the short term, they want to retain them, right? So, what do they do? Acquirer tries to have some contracts with them so that during the short period of time, at least they remain with the business. Now, impact on society as a whole because of this merger. What is it? Remember, governments carefully check each takeover very carefully. They do not allow any takeovers to happen just like this. No. If they feel the takeover is not in the best interest of society, they will stop it immediately. They will investigate it and they will stop. Because there are some competition law in most countries which are very strict. They prevent monopolies. And by acquiring, by merging, you are creating monopolies. Because competition is reducing in the market, which government does not want to happen. Because then you can exploit your power to take advantage of customers. You can charge high prices and manipulate the customers. That's the reason. Okay. Now, the problem is with accusation. These are the problems. The fit, the lack of fit syndrome. That means they might not be fitting with the management style. Maybe the product and service are good fit with each other when you're acquiring, but not the management style or the culture of the organization. Second could be industrial or commercial fit. Maybe you are charging, paying too high a price or too low a price. Okay, lack of goal congruence. The company's goal are not the same. The one that you have taken over and your company. Cheap purchases. Okay. Paying too much, you might be paying too much, too much of premium. They might not actually worth that much. So it will be costly for you because you have to finance now. Then we have failure to integrate. Yes, you might not be able to integrate effectively the two different companies. Inability to manage change. Most of us do not like change. Let's just accept that. The moment we hear the change, we're like, we go into the panic mode. We start defending ourselves. Same situation happens with the managers also in the takeover. They do not like takeover. They sorry, they do not like change and takeover or acquiring is like a change only for them. It's a massive change. So now, finally, reverse takeovers. What is reverse takeover? You know, takeover. Big company takes a small company, the weak company. Reverse means the opposite of it. Here, a private company is taking over a public company. You understanding? You must be thinking, what am I saying? How is it possible? It's yes, it's possible. And that is known as reverse takeover. So private company, okay, they want to take over the public company. But in this case, that private companies are not small companies. They are very big companies. They are even bigger than public companies also. It's just that their status is private. So they want to become public companies. What do they do? They avoid all the high cost, time and money and paperwork, everything they avoid, which is normally, uh, which is taken to become a public company, public limited company. Through reverse takeover, they, you can ignore those costs and just get a stock market listing. We can get stock market listing through IPOs also. That is initial public offering where you offer your stocks in the public. But it takes a lot of time. Money is there, highly costly. But reverse takeover is very simple. It's easier. It does not take so much of time. How does it work? First, private company, they purchase a shareholding in a public company. Here, pri private is bigger than public. Could be larger than. Okay. After that, the private company shareholder, they exchange their private company shares for shares in the public. That means turning private into public only. What are the advantages and disadvantages of reverse takeover? Advantages are that things you can become public, you can raise capital, okay, very quickly, saves time and money compared to IPO. Second, shareholders would benefit from the advantages of market listing, obviously, right? But there are disadvantages. Managers are not experienced in handling additional regulatory and compliance room because now once you become a public company you are in the eye of all the rules and regulation that is placed upon you so for that managers has to be experienced but earlier they were just private sector they, so they have to up they have to keep them up to date and it is a burden for them also in terms of money as well as time second disadvantage is company performance may makes it attractive to stock market investors 
even though company performance is very attractive it does not guarantee you that a public company will make its shares more marketable no cannot so now let's summarize this lecture whatever we have discussed we have started with reasons for growth by acquisition these are some reasons the full list is already there in the beginning of the lecture so one is synergy two plus two is five increase market power or share because competition is reduced economies of scale because cost is reduced by reducing duplication and combining complementary needs where one company's strength is used against the other companies then second is issues with accusation these are some issues cultural differences loss of key personnel from target company integration difficulties the third is synergy these are the three types of synergy revenue cost and financial synergy okay cost is economics of scale and economics of scope you focus on reducing cost revenue is you focus on increasing sales and financial is in your finances fourth impact of mergers on stakeholders all stakeholders target company shareholders acquired company shareholders debt holders on the society on the managers and finally the reverse takeovers what does reverse takeover means turning private to public company here private company is taking over the public company okay and advantages is this is lower cost than ipo that is initial public offering and the disadvantages is management might not be experienced sorry it's b management might be inexperienced with the rules i think it's i wrote it mistakenly but me it's not but me okay so management inexperienced with all these rules and all so that's it for this lecture and thank you for watching and do not forget to subscribe if you have not subscribed to my channel yet and the next lecture you definitely definitely need to watch because it's going to be full of calculations it's going to be valuation of company using three different methods that is asset based cash based and income based so see you in the next lecture